to invest or not to invest in leverage ETFs? That's the question. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome to Think Finance. My name is Raj and on this channel, I talk all things finance. Today, I wanna to talk about the most abused investment tool out there in the financial world, the leverage ETFs. Let's start by talking about some of the publications that are out there, some of the warnings that are out there on the internet. Here's a notice from Vanguard. Everyone knows Vanguard. We have our retirement accounts in Vanguard. They are a big name when it comes to investments. They made a decision that they won't allow their account holders to invest or purchase leverage ETFs. This was January 2019. On the right, you see a couple of notices that came out, or public notice as they call it, from uh, the SEC where they warn the investors how leverage ETFs is a no-no when it comes to long-term portfolio. So what does all this mean? Does that mean that you shouldn't invest in leverage ETFs at all? Forget long-term, even short-term, you shouldn't be touching leverage ETFs at all. I wanna share with you some information I have gathered, some research that I've done, and you make a call whether it makes sense or not. So we're gonna talk about a few things. We're gonna start by talking just in general, what is leverage ETFs? Then I wanna focus on argument against using them and then arguments in favor of using leverage ETFs. Then we'll dive into numbers. You know, I'd like to back claims with data, so let's look at some numbers. And then finally, I wanna share how I am using leverage ETFs, both in the short term and from a long-term perspective. So before we get into details, it's important to understand what leverage ETFs are. Right, so think about an ETF, not leverage, just ETF. An ETF tries to mimic the underlying index that it's tracking. So for example, SPY, which is an ETF, tracks S&P 500. So 1% move in S&P 500 means 1% move in SPY, the ETF. A leveraged 3x tries to multiply or amplify the gains by 3x. So a 1% move in S&P would be amplified to three times the same move. So 1% up, 3% up, 1% down, 3% down for a leverage ETFs. Wait, so how do they do this? Well. Leverage ETFs use derivatives, options, forward futures, swaps, all these different tools. The goal is to amplify gains. There are two types, basically. There's a bulls and then there's a bear side. Bull side is generally called the leveraged ETF. And then there is a bear side, which is the inverse ETF. So in essence, when the market goes up 1%, a bear side or an inverse ETF will go down 3%. But when the market drops 1%, the inverse will go up 3%, assuming it's a 3X. So that's inverse. And then you have leverage, which is more the bulls. So it's up one, th up three. There are two companies today that offer these products. Direction, Direction, Direction. I think that's how they pronounce themselves. Direction and ProShare. I will link in the description to their leverage ETF pages. So when you go to your financial advisor and ask him or her, hey, I wanna invest in leverage ETFs, what is your opinion? This is what you're gonna get. Number one, hey, it's super dangerous, it's volatile, it moves like crazy. Wait, isn't that what this is supposed to do? Isn't that the reason why they are in existence? Anyways, I digress. That's point number one. Point number two, oh, they are expensive. 0.95% expense ratio, true. And I think that's a genuine argument. They are expensive. The other thing you will hear is time decay. 
they say, hey, over time they lose value and you know, that's not good. And one of the reasons they use value is because they use derivatives and they have to make adjustments every day because derivatives include options and all these other tools that require to be adjusted over time. They also have expense uh, associated to it, the expense, the 0.95%, which also leads to adjusting the value of that share. So you shouldn't hold it longer than a day because otherwise over time you're gonna lose value. So there's this time decay factor that you have to be aware of. So that's the other argument that you'll keep hearing. So because of all these different points that we talked about in terms of super dangerous, super volatile, super expensive, uses derivatives and time decay comes into play, that's the reason why you shouldn't invest in leverage ETFs. Now let's talk about arguments in favor of using leverage ETFs. It's designed to amplify gains. So think about it, if you're right, you can literally amplify growth in your portfolio if you invest in these. 1% move in the market, 3% move for your ETF, leverage ETF. That's a pretty big deal. So it could potentially amplify growth if you're on the right side of the market. There is no margin account requirement. So in order for you to, you need a margin account to obtain leverage, typically when it comes to brokerage firms. Well, leverage ETFs come with built-in leverage. You really don't need to create a mar margin account. And then you can only lose the amount of money you've invested versus in margin account, if things go south, it could backfire and you will have to end up paying obviously the loan that you've taken on margin plus the interest. The next point here is you don't need a lot of capital just because these are leverage. So let's say the example here is you're interested in investing $10,000 in S&P 500. Well, if you use leverage, you can potentially invest, let's assume 3x leverage, you could just invest $4,000 and get similar exposure because remember it's one is to three. So all you need is four grands, give or take, to get the same level of exposure versus if you had invested in a non-leverage index, which is for S&P 500 is SPY. You get the same exposure with less money. Isn't that great? <laughs> and then it's a hedging tool. It could be a hedging tool. The inverse ETFs. So when you're expecting the market to drop, you could potentially invest money in an inverse ETF. So what does this mean? What does all of these arguments mean to a normal investor like you and I? Let's start with some numbers. Here's a slide which talks about the returns of some of the biggest leverage ETFs out there. Since they were introduced, most of them were introduced in 2009, 2010. Let's start with TQQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ 100. Since inception, they have returned, this particular leverage ETF has returned 49% year over year. Okay, UPRO, which tracks the S&P 500, has returned 39% year over year. TCL, technology sector, 49%. SOXL, again, 41%. This, is the, this tracks the semiconductor industry. This data is true as of December 31st, 2019. So if you invested when they were first introduced in 2009, you pretty much made, what, 40% on an average, 45% on an average, every year. Let's take it to the next level. Let's assume you had $20,000 to invest in 2009, and you invested 10,000 in UPRO and 10,000 in SPX or SPY, the ETF that tracks SPX or S&P 500. Look at this chart. If you did that, 
UPRO, that same $10,000, the ending investment, pretty much what that means is the value today is 315,000. And the ending investment value for SPX is $36,000. Even if you're wrong, even if I'm wrong, that long, it's not a safe bet for long-term investment, what if you're right? There, there are no numbers to justify the claim that these things are bad for your long-term portfolio. If you're not investing in these leverage ETFs for your long-term portfolio, you're missing out big time. Now, if you've not watched my strategy video and my portfolio, there are links in the description and also somewhere on the screen, there, are, there should be cards. I'm invested 35% in between UPRO, TQQQ, SOXL, and TECL. I strongly believe that these are some solid tools. They have been great. Let's do a little bit more of investigation. December 2018, S&P tanked almost 20% between September and December 2018. Let's look at some more data. So your, your two pictures, one shows between September, beginning of September through end of December 24th. That's the time frame you're talking about. And I'm comparing SP, like S&P 500 to the leverage ETF, UPRO. UPRO, if you invested $10,000 on, $10, on September 4th, the value of $10,000 on December 12th dropped to 5,150 for UPRO. For SPX or S&P 500, the value, if you were non-leveraged, the value was at 8,160. Not bad. In terms of percentage, that meant that you lost almost 50% for UPRO and around 20% for non-leveraged SPY or SPX or S in S&P 500, okay? This is the reason why they argue, oh, this is dangerous, you shouldn't do this, this is volatile. Wait, aren't they designed to do this? Aren't they designed to amplify move? This is the reason why they exist, to give you these crazy moves. When it drops, it drops big. When it flies, it flies big. That's how, that's what happens. Look what happened starting December 25th. The next four months, and I have data from 1226 to 430, 2019. The next four months, UPRO rose 67% versus 20% for SPX. So now imagine a scenario where you know, on December 24th, you decided, hey, maybe I should buy some more just to balance out, um, you know, average out, and you bought some more. You made 66% on that investment. We'll talk about strategies, but what this all means is when there are parabolic moves in these leverage ETFs or when just markets in general, when they drop like crazy, you buy more of these because you know what? These drops don't last for a long time, which is a reality. And this, this is the latest example that happened in December 2018. Even if we hit recession, even if we hit a bear market, typically bear market, and depending on where you see, I'll drop some links down in the description, depending on where you read, a bear market lasts anywhere between 11 months to 18 months. And if you consistently buy, automate your buying at regular intervals, you will buy, keep buying the dip and the return, once we are out of the bear market, returns are gonna amplify. I think it's a no-brainer. You have to invest in these as part of your long-term portfolio. Again, I have 35% invested in my portfolio. You can track my portfolio on M1 Finance, link in the description. All right, so now let's talk about some of the ways I am using these. Right, so what I am doing is I've got two accounts, one in M1 Finance, which tracks my long-term portfolio, and then I have stash of money in my Robinhood account. I started with $20,000 in Robinhood, 
and I invest, it's more short term trading and I use this and I'll make a video on how I trade these. This is more trading, the other is more investing. But I have my stash and I don't add anything more to my stash, 20,000 I started with. Every time, and I just use that to invest and leverage ETFs. And primarily this is TQQQ is what I invest in. As soon as I reach a certain threshold, let's say I've made, and my threshold is $25,000. As soon as I hit $25,000 in terms of account value, I will withdraw 5,000 from my Robinhood account and drop it into my M1 finance account, which is my long-term portfolio. So, so that is all short term. But what about the long term? First of all, you need to have a trading platform that allows you to automate your investments. M1 Finance allows me to do that. It allows me to automatically invest. Second, you need to decide what your allocation is in leverage ETF. And it depends on what your risk level is. For me, I'm putting aside 35%. That's it. 35% will go in my leverage ETF. Every month, M1 Finance pulls money from my checking account, drops it into my portfolio, and based on my allocation, makes the investment. Now, let's say tomorrow, if the market goes down a bit, and my allocation into my leverage ETF drops to 30%, M1 Finance, with the next withdrawal it makes from my check-in, is going to buy some more of those leverage ETFs and get it back to 35%. So, what it's trying to do is, or what I want it to do is whenever there's a dip or whenever there's a drop in the market, buy more of these leverage ETFs because you know what? They come back roaring. Do me a favor, look up TECL and how much it made in terms of return for 2019. Look up UPR or look up TQQQ. That's, that's the homework for you guys for the day. Okay, third thing that I'll do is every six months, I'll look at my portfolio. If it is gone, let's say now 40% of my overall portfolio, maybe I'll do some rebalancing. It doesn't happen, but what if it did? If what if the market went really parabolic and you know these leverage ETFs just took off and it hit it is now 40% of my allocation? Well, I may do some rebalancing. I might just sell some of the leverage ETFs and make sure it comes back to 35%. Here's my two cents. I think if you're not investing in these leverage ETFs as part of your long-term portfolio, you're missing out. I'm not making this up. Numbers talk for themselves. And it's not just one or two year data. This is since inception, they have been outperforming. Yes, they will drop. If you have a heart that is not the strongest out there, don't invest. Remember, when things, these go south, they'll go south like crazy. But when they return, you will feel like a genius. So automate your workflow where automatic investment happens. Set aside an allocation. For me, it's 35%. For you, it could be 20%. Stay in cash a little bit. For me, it's 15%. I have 15% of my portfolio is in cash just because when I have to buy more, more than my usual allocation, like more than what M1 Finance automatically withdraws. I have certain percentage of money set aside. And then if you have to over time rebalance, do the rebalancing. Again, if you're not investing in this, you are missing out. I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button. And if you find this content interesting, personal finance, investing, and all things finance, consider subscribing. My name is Raj, and thanks for joining. Until next time, peace.